unfortunately. Right. Um, what difficulty would we like to do? Okay, so the the answer to that question really depends on what quality of answers you want out of me. Because okay. the closer we get to legendary, the less of a human being I'll be able to be. <laughs> I like that. I like that though. Maybe we should go up from normal, and then I can ask you like the kind of easy questions, and then we can go to hard. Yeah, and then we're working. Yeah, yeah that's just because what... I honestly yeah. in live I only really play expert and legendary because you know I'm not a scrub. Yeah, there you go. That's the spirit. But yeah, for now it's too normal. It's too normal, uh, so we can walk through it. And yeah, we could enjoy ourselves. All right, all right. Um, who would you like to be? Would you like to be Mora? Or would you want to do Reaper? Oh. Moira. All right. <clears throat> cool. All right. All right. Um. So I got some questions lined up, but if, I guess what we could do is like per area as well. You could. Hold on a minute. Let me just move the game. He thought he was untouchable. Um. He was you could kind of explain like fun little facts about like each area, and then I could kind of ask some like little bits and questions about it as well. A lot of the questions I have are kind of like generic, um, or like general versus like uprising and retribution and the new things that have been added and so on. Right, right. Yeah, I can. I certainly speak to like this area is kind of unique in the sense that when we developed this, we developed the PvP map and the PVE map in tandem. Right. But this whole area is not in the PvP map at all. Oh, okay. In fact, the area at the end, what we call this is what we call holdout A internally. The other one's holdout B. Um, the, the the last little holdout that we'll get to also is not in the, the PvP map. The PvP map ends in the art gallery, or I guess to say it begins in the art gallery, oh, wow. kind of doing the PvP map. So that's available on um, the PTR now, right? I've not actually played it. I've only seen a, a few little clips of like Arissa's riding boats like through some uh, rivers. <laughs> Genji's dancing on boats. You know, a lot, a lot of boat play. I'm glad that's getting. We, we invested in boat tech, so it's important to get those payoff. Yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, what we're seeing here, story-wise, this is kind of Antonio's mansion. Mm -hmm. um, in the story, we've, uh, Reyes has just assassinated this dude that that Blackwatch was supposed to actually take into custody. Yeah. So he's going off script. This is plan B, right? <laughs> this is plan B. Um, yeah, so when we iterated on this area for the AI sake, we were, we were really looking to see how can we kind of sell this fantasy of you being surrounded and attacked from multiple fronts. Yeah. Um, that kind of links to really the, it links to one of my questions about the like the dynamic elements as well, because of course like the, the enemies attack you, you know, not every time it's from the left or the right straight away, it could be from the ceiling straight away. Yeah. Um, uh, so is that just like a, a random kind of event each time on this first part? Yeah, it's a l way more heavy-handed when you play all heroes mode. Um, the randomness is pretty subdued on um, on the story mode. So we, we put the game you play in two modes, right? You have story mode, which is what we're playing here, and then all heroes mode, where you're not limited to what heroes you can select. Yeah. Uh, and in story mode, we we did we did intend to keep it semi-consistent. It wasn't so much about the variety and replayability. So it's mostly fixed. You don't you don't get crazy stuff in this room per se. Yeah. Um, whereas if you play this in all heroes mode, not only do you get a little bit of variety in terms of who spawns what and where, but you also might get an assassin or a sniper who shows up halfway through. Yeah, um, so I played we're, the, we're, uh, we're, that mode as well on Farah. Completed it on uh, Expert, and uh, I was quite surprised to see the Farrah. sniper in the beginning. Farrah. Yeah, I did it on Farah on Expert, which I thought was quite impressive considering, you know, you are literally playing against bots, right? Like AI bots with uh, good aim. Yeah, we, we do some concessions. All the heroes Everyone get some concessions for the AI. So when when Farah uses her her rocket boost or hovers to some degree, the the trooper AI, the base AI, yep. will miss more. Oh wow! So we, we do we do, do you a solid there. We don't want you to get just smoked every time you use your cool abilities. Yeah, yeah. That, that was actually kind of fun. It was fun. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that was something that I recognized in Uprising was that I, I couldn't play Farah at any of the higher levels because I literally just got taken out yep. of the sky straight away. There was like no chance. Yeah. You can... Yeah. Yeah. We took that feedback. But that was something we all felt as well. Mm -hmm. um, and and really wanted to to take advantage of what you can do in PVE that you can't do in PVP, which is to say in PVP, the enemy players don't really play along with hero fantasy. They're just trying to win too. Yeah. But in PVE, we can actually make the AI play into the fantasy of, of these heroes. So you, you saw when you death blossomed right there, um, the AI are more prone to miss you during that moment. Oh, wow. uh, if you're Genji and you deflect, the AI will actually, I think they immediately, like instantaneously reload. So they have a full clip and we double the clip size, because why not? And they unload into you. 
It oh, makes you do the cool. stupidest thing they can possibly do, and it feels amazing. And that's kind of the whole point. That's what really the big fun of PVE for us is that we can. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I got to heal Armor Creek. Um, <laughs> that's the that's important. You got to be really... team play first. Team play first. Right. Yeah, we we can we can lean into the fantasy of reading. Um, other fun stuff we do, like like if you use an ult, uh, like like Dragon Blade or even Death Blossom, uh, the AI will, or the troopers in particular, will they'll stumble, they'll they'll like pretend to run away. It's kind of this. Yeah, I've seen like, like they they turn and focus you, forward. and then yeah, and they'll try and get away. Like, it's, so how many different variations yeah. are there for the heroes as well? So, or is it kind of like very similar variations of that? Or did you have to like do it for each of the heroes in uh, all heroes? Is there like a kind of a, an effect that happens for all of them? Uh, yeah, it, there's there's some effects are more pronounced than others. So yeah. like if it's a super fatal maneuver, like a um, uh, like if Diva tosses her mech or or um, when Hansel summons a dragon, a couple of our AI do some like, like not the troopers. Troopers kind of are, are there to scramble and look like they're trying to self preserve, but they're yeah. really just trying to play a cool performance of dying in a cool superhero way. But like the sniper will try to get out of the way of those types of attacks. Oh, that's cool. Um, so this is the assassin was one of the ones that first of all I really like the sound of it. The sound is so cool. Yeah. Um, and also it's it's different from anything like we've seen in uprisings, but in terms of like the speed and I guess like what were the challenges with the assassin? The the biggest challenges with the assassin were all the specific rules that different abilities will have against her. Right. Yeah. So like clearly when she jumps on a teammate. You want to have some agency there. Like you want to feel like you're you're a hero when you go to rescue your teammate. So we had to do all sorts of stuff. Like, well, okay, if you stun her, she obviously um, it, it takes story mode, for example. You have the you have the, the four heroes here that you're kind of constrained with. Um, we had to have an out for all of them. Yeah. So we can stun Reaper and Moira can basically you know phase out. Yeah. And Genji can dash. Genji dashes through the. Uh, the assassin that basically counts as a stun. Yeah. Those are just conceits we put in just so that everyone had, you know, some some agency against the assassin. Yeah. For all heroes, it gets way more complex, right? Never, we're going toe to toe with this guy. I can't, I can't hear you yet, buddy. Oh, I threw the wrong orb. I'm a bad person. <laughs> One sec. There you go. Yeah, I'm. I'm get that sunshine beam going. We're taking the yeah, we'll get there. All right, so so for for other heroes, is there? We we tried to kind of align with players' expectations, right? So if you're Sombra and you hack the assassin, mm -hmm. she'll you know she'll fall off her purge or she'll she'll jump off of your teammate. If yeah. you uh, yeah, do any other normal stun, she'll have a similar effect. So really going through and handcrafting for every single hero was a big challenge. I bet, I bet. Uh, and, and and the bugs never stop with like Diva, because Diva's a bug machine. So yeah. naturally if she jumps on your mech and destroys your mech she the behavior she needs to react to that and move away and back to the wall and all that stuff. So, so I was really surprised that, that the uh, the assassin took me out as far in the middle of the sky as well. I remember the first time that happened. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, That's another good example. Of, like, like these are deliberate behaviors we had to put in because yeah, Barrett yeah. really cheesed. Exactly. I was, th I was thinking. I was like, is that you know, was that a bug that just happened or was that like a legit you know? It uh, legit. Oh, yeah, she'll nice. even like like jump up onto a crate to jump up onto you. Like she. Yeah, we, we pushed out, we have, we have new kind of uh, pathfinding and path following rules for our AI that we're really pushing in this, which is AI's ability to actually jump up and jump down off ledges. Oh, that's cool. Turns out it's actually a tricky AI problem, but we have a very talented group of AI engineers. Uh, Jan Muller in particular was the one who uh, was able to get that into our system. Because that was one of my uh, yeah. one of my questions about the Assassin's AI as well. So, um, like, how, how does it know which person to target? Is it based on like how well they're doing or is it just kind of randomly selecting that? target that's nearest it, to them there's two criteria so what one, one is just random one is just the yeah. and random and try not to attack the same person twice um and other constraints like let's say you're fair and you're really really high up. like she can't jump an infinite uh height so yep. she might throw you out as a potential target if you're way far away um, the other constraint is if you break off from the team and you, you go oh, way I far see. ahead you will spawn a random assassin whose job it is to basically wreck your head. Yeah, because I see. It's, and that's that's not even. As she kind of like dashes around, it's kind of like she teleports as well. So it's like a really fast kind of dash slash teleport. Yeah. Um. So that's kind. 
That's interesting to know as well. Because, yeah, I was wondering what the criteria was of, like, how the assassin picked. I thought, like, maybe if they're doing the most damage and have the most eliminations and the assassin, like, come over to you. Um, but it's cool that there is some sort of criteria and that it isn't just random as well. Like, get, picking people who are out yeah, of position yeah. as well. And they play more as a team. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. Uh, gameplay is better when you play. Yeah, yeah of course. Relatively close. Yeah, but a little bit of pressure on players. Yeah. Just attacks, not big. Alright. Um, I mean, yeah, other systems. Are like revive like if you're way out far away and you get you get taken down yeah you're gonna bleed out if your teammates aren't nearby so yeah of course so yeah, something... we want we want you to feel like your teammates are contributing to your success yeah yeah that's really that's cool. not... so would you say uh, is retribution longer than uprising or is it the same size or what you say in terms of like game uh, in, terms of, in terms of play time yeah in terms of play time and it seems i can't tell they seem very similar in terms of that yeah, they are. They're about. We, we, we try to shoot for like 8 to 10 minutes. I think Uprising might be a little longer. Um, Uprising certainly has way more and denser objectives. Yeah. Like, we, we eased off that a lot for Retribution. We <laughs> There's basically three objectives. Survive in a room, and then run to a room, and then survive in that room. <laughs> yeah, nice guy. Keep it simple. Um... Yeah, we're, we're still trying to zero in on exactly you know, what what's the how intense the objectives need to be, how... How much kind of mental pressure do we have to put on the players to complete their? So uh, I guess I was learning curve from Uprising. So, so that was uh, another one of my questions: is what did you like from Uprising, which you kept in the new event, and uh, as well as what did you get rid of from Uprising? Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so as what we got rid of, we, we definitely dialed down on the um, on the objective complexity. It's just much, you know, it's a much more straightforward game. I think story-wise, it, it's a lot crisper as well than Uprising. Yeah, it feels um, like more lore based this time for sure. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah exactly. I, I, I think the you know, the lore was was compelling for Uprising, but this one's you know, yeah, prettier and cooler, and it, it has dug out some characters that we normally wow, he just totally wrecked that. Mm -hmm. I love that. The heavy assault has plenty of fire, which is fun. Yeah, um, I noticed that once when uh, a heavy he uh, did a charge on an enforcer and uh, pinned him against the wall and killed him. Yeah. I was very surprised about that, and uh, it was it was very cool. I guess you could use that as like a strategy to use the uh, the heavy and your advantage, taking out other people. Uh, yeah, I see. That's yeah, pretty fine. Um, uh, yeah, the um. So so in, in terms of like the the objective Christmas, I love like the dropship event. Like it really thing ends as yes. opposed to uprising. It. You don't really get the stakes. Uprising, if you if you follow the story, what you're trying to do is basically stop this terrorist Omnic group yeah. blowing up, you know, King Dro. Uh, but that doesn't really read. Whereas this one, the objective is to escape. Yes. And as you can see, we're escaping. Like, it's it's really clear. Mission so. complete, yep. Yeah. On my screen, we completed it. That's the right. So on the second time I played that, I didn't... Like, I was blinded when it said get on the dropship, and I just had all these waves of enemies coming at me, and I was really happy just, like, going through all these enemies, not realizing that I actually had to escape. Um, yeah. So I kind of really enjoyed that element, actually, where it was just, like, waves of enemies coming out and kind of, like, getting harder as well. Uh, and then I uh, yeah. and then I died, and then I was like, oh, right, yeah, sure, I should have jumped on the ship. But that was me just not <laughs> seeing the words in the middle of the screen saying get to the ship. That's okay. You and about 20 million other players. Yep. So, um, um, didn't something get changed? Was there a patch for that, or was that something that I didn't read about? We did, we did change one thing a couple days after launch. Yeah, we made it so that if you um, if you die during that moment, um, the, your other teammates do not need to revive you to complete the mission. Oh, really? Oh, and that's that cool. was our concession. We actually made that because of griefers. Like, there there were folks who were deliberately. Well, griefer or otherwise, fun with the fundamental attribution error. Like, I don't know if you, uh, from your perspective, you're probably having fun holding out against a bunch of brutes and assassins. From yeah. your teammates' perspective, yeah. if they're randos, they probably thought you were griefing them. Either way, um, we 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 made a bit of an error there in terms of how that objective worked. We just didn't anticipate that players would grief on that final holdout. So we put in the new rule where only the surviving teammates need to be on the dropship in order to win. Um Despite the fact that it doesn't fit with the lore at all, but um, yeah, yeah, no, of course. 
I mean, that makes sense, though. It's just, like, something I guess you wouldn't really think about when you're making it, and then, like, oh, right, yeah, so people <laughs> just want to stay out and try and take out as many assassins and heavies as they can, die, exactly, yeah. and then, like, you'll never actually get to fly away. So that's really cool. Uh, let me have a look what else we've got. So we've got the the, dy the dynamic. So is there any AI learning based on, like, your gameplay um, when you're playing, or is it kind of very similar to... to... Um, it's So the, the kind of discipline around the AI is uh, reactive AI, which is to say that the majority of their behaviors are in direct reaction to what you're doing. Okay. Um, as opposed to like what you're describing. This is actually fun. I, I, my background is in, is in game AI, so I can answer this a lot. Um, yeah, you're, you're speaking to like a general learning AI system or an expert system. Um, and I, I can probably construe a bit of learning that the AI do, but it's, it's not like, it's not the, when, when people say AI learning in games, they usually session of session over the course of a like a, a long five to ten minute session yeah. and they i definitely don't do that they're not they're not taking copious notes of how you behave and then reacting mm -hmm. uh, with with new behavior there and that wasn't the goal of it the goal was again the 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 fantasy around this pve is celebrating you guys as heroes doing cool stuff um so really the ai we we, we deliberately went out of our way to make the ai reactive to your abilities to what you're doing um or like the assassin sniper and, and uh, heavy assault, we wanted the AI to provide these kind of compelling novel challenges that were um, learnable by the humans, not necessarily learnable by the AI. So if you yeah. if you play the game enough, you kind of master how the assassin works, you master how the heavy assault works, you master how the sniper works. That's what we're that's what we're trying to reward here. We're trying to reward that mastery. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and it seems yeah. legendary is uh, obviously a much difficult, uh, much more difficult kind of um, game mode, and it, it re you really feel it in this one as well. You've really got, oh, yeah. kind of got to work with your team and and like learning. So we, when we were going through to the assassin, we'd say, right, we're going to fall back a little bit and then give a bit of space yeah. between us and the assassin, so you can see the assassin coming to you a little bit more. Uh, and I guess it's kind of like that sort of like learning for us based on like what that's the right. AI do. Yeah, and that, that that's that's the that's the important part, right? In terms of AI behavior, make it learnable. Um, but by the same token, we like we like the variety, particularly in all heroes mode on expert and legendary. We like the variety of the encounters. How yeah, you you jump into that first alleyway outside of the first holdout, and you might get a dropship with a bunch of dudes followed by a sniper. You might get two snipers. You might get a sniper and an assassin. Yeah, right? that that is really compelling because we we want we want you as players to be surprised by kind of the composition of the AI, but not necessarily surprised by the behavior of a specific AI. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's just like you, they don't want you to be surprised by the behavior of a Reaper. Yeah. Right? When you see Reaper, you know exactly what his kid is, you know what the, what that dude's verbs are. Yep. Same thing with a sniper. You see a sniper, you, you should understand how she works uh, and where you need to be in order to take her out, what abilities you should use. You know, if, you're, if you're Genji, you're on point, you got to reflect that shot. Because on Legendary, that's going to take off like 400 health and stun her. Yeah. Right. So, and those are those are the learnable behaviors that I think are really compelling about PVE, and that's consistent really with with I think Blizzard's philosophy for PVE. It's kind of fun to work here. Yeah, our team has been working on this big competitive shooter for a number of years. It's really great to tap into the zeitgeist of of the PVE gameplay that we do here at Blizzard, and yeah, really I love it. Learn it's throw. really fun. Yeah. It's really really, and that's like kind of like. Obviously, a lot of people are a big fan of like the story-based kind of like campaign elements uh, of Overwatch and wanting mm -hmm. more of that. So this really kind of feeds the people who who want it. I mean, I really loved uh, Uprising; it was amazing, uh, and I was really excited to see what was going to happen this year as well. And um, yeah, love the lineup of the heroes uh, and the locations really cool as well. So it's in uh, is it Rialto, the new map? Yeah, Rialto's in Venice. Yeah, in Venice. So that's the the new map. I haven't actually played it yet. I'm really looking forward to to jumping on and giving it a go. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It looks, you know, it's daytime in the PvP mode, so it's a lot different. Uh, we're on hard now. Uh, oh, yeah, so we're cool. we're on we're on hard now. Yeah, cool. This guy does not want to play Moira. Fine. You don't even know. It's so good. So is Moira your favorite out of the the heroes of, for this mode then, or who's your choice? Uh, actually, Moira during Dev, I didn't play Moira much because. Uh, my boy Adrian Fanal would play Moira a ton, or Heiberg. Um, I played a ton of McCree when we were in Dev. Um, I, everyone, everyone loved Genji though. Genji was the, the insta pick. As you said, who doesn't want to be a cyborg was, ninja, right? Yeah, well, Kaplan, Kaplan would play Genji during Dev all the time. He, he never plays it when we play on PvP, so 
It was yeah. a nice refreshing change of pace for him. I love the yeah, I love playing McCree on this mode for sure. It's probably one of my favorite. Uh, what was the what do you say is the what the hardest part to kind of create with retribution in terms of like in your area? Um, I think trying to figure out spawning and and really trying to figure out the the obviously we have procedural spawning right to some degree yep. like we we have and, and and the designers and engineers can really control how to what degree it is procedural and we really had to spend a lot of time i have to heal up sorry let me come into this hallway please i'm out of teal juice um that's what i mean they increase the difficulty and you're gonna have lower quality answers <laughs> yeah. i'll try to concentrate all right so um uh we we had to zero in on um how procedural we wanted to go right so the, the, if you think of it as a spectrum like there's 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 perfectly crafted pve experiences where the designers are, are hand placing every single ai yep. um even to the degree where they're hand placing exactly what the ai do once they show up uh, we knew we didn't want that because we don't have a staff of 13 level designers yeah yeah, yeah. And we already had pretty reasonable ai that we were that we had built out of retribution and and chunk of revenge and just the bot ai for the real games so we knew yeah, you know, we don't need to have the designers hand holding the AI. They can kind of hope, figure out how to behave in cool ways. Yeah. Um, but in, uh, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you have like like a Left 4 Dead where it's very procedurally spawned. Like there's very little markup that the designers have to do in order to populate a level. Um, so trying to figure out where we wanted to lie on that spectrum of craftsmanship, um, or I should say crafted, I should say crafted, but crafted versus procedural was uh, a fun challenge i think um and we have a great group of individuals who really started digging out that challenge months ago and uh we're, we're happy with what we learn from retribution i <clears throat> i'm hoping we can take that learning and apply it to their pve events really just pvp events if we need to yeah um so it i, I think that that challenge was delightful and the individuals that worked on that um really supportive of each other and supportive how difficult that challenge is going to be but we understood what the stakes were we understood that you know we yeah it's compelling novel so, pve experience how long how long were and, you working on retribution overall from kind of beginning of design to, to final production uh i think well it's tricky we started working on some of the tech pretty early on um like last summer ish mm -hmm. but um skinji got lit um but uh, we had a, a small group of folks kind of working on that spawning problem all through late summer. And, oh, and then it was until the winter, or yeah, until like midwinter that we basically started like the legit retribution push where we had the entire staff of the team working on stuff. So that's where we really started to dig out the. Um, nice. So was the, 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 the bulk of the time then just working out the spawns then? And then everything else was not, not to say straightforward, right, yeah. but you know, yeah. I guess easier to kind of put together. Yeah, yeah. There's a small group of engineers and designers that were that were focused on that. Um, it, kind of in parallel, we, we were doing a lot of talent development, like working on the ecology, these talent units. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that didn't really that, the the talent push uh, hit much harder um, by the winter than it did over the the fall and summer. So was this map always meant to be a uh, payload map as well, or did that kind of come later on when you thought, oh, this is a cool map, you know? And... Yeah, yeah, because we, we started in terms of like the paper design for them. We started that with with PVE in mind. Although we knew we were sorry with PVP in mind. Although we knew we were doing PVE as well, um, and we knew okay, it's payload time. That was that was what our next yeah. Be. We yeah. also kind of thought that um, one of the big challenges that we didn't we didn't think we did a terrific job at with uprising was what we call the A to B objectives, which is go from this point to this point, go from point A to point B. Right. Um, we had that in uprising, but it was kind of anemic right when you walk through the streets it's not much going um so we knew that was kind of a uh, a weak point for our pve spawning and ai systems so we wanted to solve that as a challenge so we're like oh it's a it's a payload map payload maps are basically one giant artery yep through which the the payload travels so let's let's just do it in reverse and we'll fight a bunch of ai and and basically challenge ourselves to uh to to solve the problem of a to b and making a compelling gameplay experience when you 
walking down the street. Yeah. And so I'm would really you say this is? Out. Would you say like where we are right now is kind of like you know the walking point that you're talking about? Like you know we're not we're going towards the next yeah. objective and we're just you know stomping through troopers and, and forces and obviously now we're about to get into the assassin as well. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. Right. So so the, the parts that aren't holdouts, the holdout at the beginning, the holdout at the end, everything else is just A to B. And it constitutes the bulk of the experience. Yeah. And that was deliberate because we wanted to learn like, how to make that experience cool. And in the process, we had, you know, we worked on specials, we worked on drop ships, and really cool ways for the, oh boy, don't die. Really cool ways for the AIs to enter the scene. Um, we worked on you know, the procedural spawning, which you obviously see a lot more all heroes mode than you do in yep. the story mode where, yeah, th you could get any of these number of random fights could uh, could happen to you. Um, all all of that technology, all those designs, us solving this problem of how do we make it compelling to get the players to go from point A to point B? Yeah. So that's why I kind of liked when I did do the all heroes mode is that there were more kind of bulky heroes along the way rather than just being the basic ones that you have during you know the the kind of story mode uh, retribution. Oh man, this team doesn't know the strat. Come on, back up, back up! Come to the courtyard! Our Reaper's gonna die, I'll ruin the ending. Oh, he's taking care of ads, never mind, he's doing good. I know, I'm down. Alright, right, you got me, you got me. Uh, I think so, we gotta get the cover fast though. So, have you his... tried all heroes? By um, the way? Have I tried all heroes? What, sir? But you do May and Brigitte, and then you can do anyone else. And they can base the two of those. Those ladies can stun lock heavy assault like. Oh wow. There we go. Heavy down. So heavy seem to be the biggest problem for the higher levels at least, because they just take so long to take out. I mean they're, they're called heavy for yeah. a reason, I well, suppose, right? We we noticed even um, at, at the higher levels, it's not just the heavy, you have to do the heavy and what we call ads, right? So all all the all the enforcers and troopers. You yeah. have to have them both. Yeah. It's just the heavy by himself. You can kite him, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you, you yeah. add in that spice of those those kind of non-stop stream of three or four other bad dudes. and That's uh, just about juggling it. Sense. Yeah. I love doing that. Doing the high noon as they drop down. I know. <laughs> That's coming down. Makes this fight a lot easier, too. Yeah. Uh, this is oh, oh this is Sassin. I love the noise, honestly. It, it was me. It was me all along. So I, you can tell when, when she's targeting you if uh, I use my... Uh, Sassin down. Oh no! Yeah. So how you so say how can you tell when she's uh, targeting you? Like I uh, guess you can see her running. Well, she, like she's, she's running at you, but if you're grouped up, you can't tell. But like I, I used my um, yeah, shift ability, and right. she stopped. So I uh, know she was after. Me. So why did she kind of stop? Is that something that you put in to like say right? This is where she should have been, and she missed the target, and she has to like recalibrate herself a little bit, or? Uh, that's the idea. Yeah, I think we we obviously could could do more with um with the performance to sell what that was it's a little too mechanical mm. uh, these are these are the questions you can ask me next year when... yeah yeah sure um yeah. So, so so the kind of theorizing that you know this is this is oh actually before i ask that drop ships can be hit or these sh ships can be hit can you actually destroy them yeah oh, i've never actually you can them. you can scare them off i think it's a short answer oh, basically yeah. there are a couple there are a handful of drop ships that can drop multiple payloads of uh of bad dudes right and if you damage them, they will basically take off before they can drop the second payload. Oh, okay. Because um, I was trying to make one blow up. Yeah. yeah. Also added to the list of things we can talk about next year. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, so back to the question I was going to ask before I saw the, the dropship. Um, so kind oh, of theorizing uh, that, you know, this has gone well and potentially whatever. There could be another one in the future. Um, would you expand that more on like the dynamic AI elements or is there something that you'll take from Retribution uh, and can kind of continue or are there some things that in Retribution you kind of would drop out? Um, so I would say, yeah, so I, obviously there's no announcements to make. We, we don't have a plan that far out that, that talks about the next PvE experience, but obviously our players like it, so this time yeah. going to wreck our face. Oh, Sorry, right, I'm going to get up. Got it. Right, one sec. I, you asked me like the trickiest question, right? <laughs> everything's, going totally, everything's going so bad. It's all right. Sorry. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Behind the corner. Trying to answer the question. Yeah. So, so I think like what, what, what is compelling? I think we the procedural spawning, anything in service of, of re, moment to moment gameplay replayability is really compelling to us. Mm -hmm. We, we. It's funny. We we spend a bunch of energy on kind of replayable 
or, 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 I'm sorry, on the um, procedural spawning stuff. Yeah. Early in technology's development, but we didn't um, we didn't wind up really using it in earnest until late in the in the retribution development, and really really more for all heroes mode because we wanted we wanted the consistency of story. Mode yeah, yeah. The craziness in all heroes. So I'm excited to push that way further. I, I, again, I, I think surprising surprising the players is an important value there. Uh, yeah, I was definitely surprised. Times. Yeah, I was definitely surprised when I went All Heroes and saw like the extra challenge. It just didn't feel like, oh, we've done it and now we're doing it again. Because uh, you, there, yeah, yeah. there was All Heroes in uh, Uprising, right? But then it felt, I think, similar. Right. There wasn't any extra kind of like yeah, little it, bits. It's, it's pretty. Yeah, moment to moment is pretty much identical. The only difference yeah. is uh, the narrator because they can't talk directly with. Yeah, of course. See you. All those guys. Um, whereas yeah, this one is. Uh, the, the spawning is drastically different. Actually, the, the moment to moment gameplay, the things you are doing and fighting can be radically different. Uh, I don't want to die. Of course, you're not. Um, so, I think, I think that's an area we want to push. I think AI and ecology design, we also push. We want, we want, I, I personally think, I, I like that we have. Bad day. Run. I'm alive! <laughs> oh no, this is not. Um, I'm happening. 15 HP. I got 5 HP. Right. The biggest high noon in the world is about to happen. This is not going to work. Oh! <laughs> Never mind. Here. No high noons going to happen. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So, um, uh, Uprising, I, I thought the uh, ecology designs, when I say ecology, I mean literally these guys we're seeing right now. It's the, the units that we're fighting against. I thought the ecology design was pushed um, in a cool direction Yes. with Talon. I, I like that we were able to make kind of these unique special units. I mean, it, it was cool to fight Bastion and Arisa um, in Uprising. That was nice because they were familiar. Kind of, yeah, they were familiar because of the part of the, right. you know, the Overwatch lineup. But I mean, in terms of uh, right. selectable heroes to play. But these guys aren't, you know, you can't play as a heavy or an assassin. I mean. And that was, that was part of the sensibility too with Uprising. Like, well, you know, it's cool to give the players specials that they're used to fighting. Whereas for Retribution, we're like, well, what would happen if we just gave them totally unique stuff? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm happy where that landed. So put, I think pushing that further is really important to, again, the moment to moment experience of PVE. Um, so yeah, uh, procedural spawning and, and cool AI makeup. That's, that's fun for moment to moment. Um, anything we can do to really push the heroes is always a win for Overwatch. So we do have special concessions. I don't know if you noticed, but cooldowns are slightly different in PVE. I mentioned the stuff like Genji, whenever he deflects, um, the trooper AI unloaded to him with abandon. Uh, so there's there's cool moments that we can what we can do on a per hero basis that I think are are compelling. You can never lose if you make the heroes cooler in Overwatch. It's really yeah. Easy easy to design direction. Yeah. Uh, and then from a storytelling standpoint, um, people like this stuff, right? So I I'm I'm excited. You know, I I don't know the details of the story. I'm just kind of pre Overwatch history story, and we're still digging it out as a team. Yeah. So it's always fun to tell these stories and 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 give a chance for these heroes to become multi-dimensional um that, what i love about retribution is that like you, you think of ray as um as the reaper yes. is kind of deliberately a flat character so that we can tell these stories in contrast to who he is and i today. love that i love i love that it makes the game feel more like more than a game i'm sure you've heard this you know it makes it it gives it personality gives it character gives it you know lore uh, and I guess this is right. one of the first glimpses of when, you know, Reyes Reaper kind of started to, I guess, turn to the dark side, I guess. Yeah, and, and there's still, his motivations are still cloudy, right? I think that's really cool. Because even in, in modern Overwatch era, his motivations are cloudy. Yes. At least from, from what what the players experience. And that's, that's I think, that's compelling. That, that makes makes for an interesting character. And it does. he's just years of, of fodder to dig out. So... Um, uh, I can't. I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the right person to ask about what our learnings are from a story standpoint. Um, yeah. I can only speak superficially. Um, that's probably a better question if you ever get a chance to chat with um, uh, with Mike Chu. But <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love the storytelling um, through cinematics, and then and then uh, kind of continue from there. It's so satisfying yeah. as well uh, with these little kind of side doors with Genji because you just do like three dashes and they're all dead. Because somebody's gonna yeah. die. Oh, yeah. Somebody die. It's gonna reset your thing. Yeah. 
so this is actually on uh, what game are we on now? Legendary? No, expert. It's, this is expert now. It's expert. This yeah. is not legendary. We've been vaporized by now. So um, between the differences of the difficulties, is it just the accuracy and the amount of, of kind of enemies, or is there more to it than that? Uh, it's I think at a high level that's accurate. There's a couple of behavioral differences for the um, for the special units as well. Um, I can go into detail on that. It's actually kind of cool inside yeah, sure. baseball if you want. All right. So the way the troopers work, they're, they're you know, the most prolific unit, so they kind of serve as a baseline for difficulty. Um, there's a couple different systems in play for audio and balance purposes. If you have, for example, six troopers targeting you, only one can fire at a time. Oh, really? Otherwise, you off. No, no, the, the reality is oh, one one fires a shot, the next one fires a shot. It's, it's pretty rapid. Oh, okay. Um, so, and it's kind of cool because we, we can do that for audio's sake. And then we can balance just difficulty independently of that because we know you know, for any given person, it's, think of it like a Kung Fu circle. If you're watching a Bruce Lee movie, Dude's mm -hmm. surrounded by like three dudes. He only fights one or two at a time. Yeah. Same idea. Like oh, you as a human being aren't gonna be able to process like every single rifle shooting at you. So we just have one shoot at a time. But that pro that that's you know point three seconds followed by the next rifle. But at least you know your brain doesn't go turn to Swiss cheese. Um, after that, there's a system of basically damage per second budgets. So a trooper on, a, for example, on like um, hard difficulty, I think a group of troopers do um one second i know i have my job to kill these boat dudes is coming up second i'm about to die nine oh i need to fill into the water oh, i'm good i'm good um yeah so there's there's special rules about uh, about what we call damage per second schedule dps schedule that the troopers have to follow so that's that's scaled based on how many troopers are currently targeting so, so is that for example, dif different difficulty or is that for all difficulties yeah, the same? Different, different difficulty, yeah. So on hard, it's like if one trooper is targeting you, they can only do like 40 damage a second or 20 damage a second total. And they'll deliberately miss in order to maintain that budget. Oh, wow. If there's if there's like three three or more targeting you, they, they are allowed to do like 80 damage per second. Um, as you go up in difficulty, that damage per second budget goes up pretty dramatically. In fact, on legendary, I think a group of like two or three troopers can kill you in a second. Yeah, so I had that don't. one. It was like kind of one one trooper, almost like headshotted me, and I was down straight away. Oh yeah, yeah. One one trooper will do 100 damage to you really quick, like in half a second. It's pretty punishing. Um, the troopers are the only ones that follow those rules. Everyone else, there's no limit on on the damage. They can do whatever damage they want. Um, we, we, we simply scale the damage per shot. So like a sniper on uh, legendary will do 200 damage deals, basically a shot kill on everyone except Reaper. Whereas um, the uh, uh, on on easier difficulties, she might do 50 or something like that. So we just scale it up. Yeah. Um, uh, same thing for the Enforcer. The Enforcer can pretty much one shot you at close range. Oh boy. So, so is that based on how many uh, how many troopers are in the area, like a specific area? So for example, if, if uh, another team member is somewhere else, is it um, is it different per person or is it the same per person? So for example, if there's six uh, uh, troopers in front, is it like the same damage between the whole group or is it per, per uh, like one of those? The the damage scales based on the numbers of troopers currently targeting an individual player. All right, okay. So it, it basically, it, it kind of answers your question in terms of if you're separate not it, I, invariably because of how targeting works when you're separate from the group all the troopers are going to be used so you're going to take a ton more damage yeah yeah Shoot. Uh, the reaper up. Uh, i'll be on assassin duty i think oh, she's targeting me hope oh, she is got her nice light her up light her up no quit oh, down. oh boy oh, off now. um yeah so then there's other other um tiny nuances to balance in terms of the health like the characters have the the enemies have more health yeah um on higher difficulties not the troopers though. i think they're the same but the, the, the heavy have... the heavy certainly do yeah the health <laughs> heavies. Definitely. Right. so i think we're good yeah i think we're good all right well thank you so much for your time tim as always i'll uh i'm looking to come back over to to blizzcon this year again hopefully so you might see me there again i hope so. i'll hopefully see you yeah, yeah. Come on, let's to kind of do something there so that'd be really cool um but right. yeah, yeah wicked thank you so much for your time